Foye, what was your biggest takeaway from oh, yesterday's man. game? So the okay, so it's it's uh, well, I guess I'll start with the I'll start with positive. I'll start with Mr. Mr. Brightside. Okay, that um, that they actually had an offense that we should have been seeing the entire year. The offense looked good. It was uh, play action. It was efficient. They they brought up a different bunch of different looks, a bunch of different route concepts. So to me. Where was that the entire year? That's all I kept thinking about. I was like, wow, this is actually, they look like they're, you know, once everything settled down, it looked like the offense was actually, you know, coached by an offensive coordinator. <laughs> That's what it looked like to me. That's what it looked like to me. But, but you really. You need to shut your like, dirty mouth and saying that is what you need to do. <laughs> but I don't want to bury the lead. I don't want to bury the lead because ultimately the lead is the most improbable thing happened twice. If I were to tell if I was to tell you that the Buffalo Bills would take the opening kickoff and run it back for a touchdown under those circumstances in that atmosphere with everything that was going on, you would probably say, No way, no how. Right? Wouldn't you not a chance in hell? Well, I I don't know because of the emotion. We know that Bill Belichick likes to defer. That one I can talk myself into. Okay, fine. I'll give you that one. Everybody is hooped up. I mean, yep. look. The, the pregame atmosphere was everything you and I had talked about and even a little bit more. Okay, so I'll give you that one. Fine, it happens. Rare. Rares rare. can be. Okay, On kickoff the returns. Opening kickoff, right. Yeah, kickoff returns are rare to begin with. Opening kickoffs, okay, a whole nother story. The fact that it happened again, mm -hmm. the fact that it happened again has to be the most improbable thing of this entire outcome. Or that with all that being said, the Patriots still had a chance. They did. I don't know which one's. More, like, you know, improbable. The fact that they ran back two kickoff returns for touchdowns or, with that being said, the Patriots still had a shot at this? They had a chance. Like, after the first one, you're like, holy crap. And then the first series by the uh, by the Patriots, it's three and out, and Mac gets sacked. You're like, okay, this is the first time they throw it. It's a terrible throw. Everybody's all hyped up. And you're like, holy cow, this is going to be terrible. Mm -hmm. Sure as hell, they settle down. And at one point in time, they actually took the lead in this game. It's crazy. I was like. I'm, they're not going to win this game, are they? There's not a chance in hell they're going to win this game. Well, actually, they didn't. But the fact that they kept they they stayed relevant up until like the you know the fourth quarter for the most part is amazing to me. Uh, and w especially with the way it started, clearly the big kickoff return, and then the first offensive series for the Patriots was trash. Ugly. And I thought that everybody was overhyped. That's where that was the one time where I felt in watching yesterday's yeah. game that the Patriots were. We gotta match their intensity. Yeah. It's like they yeah. were. It's like they were trying to go out there like the old Ultimate Warrior, the old WWF wrestler, where you'd hear the music and he goes sprinting down the aisle and he grabbed the rope and shake it. Like to me, that's what I thought Mac Jones was trying to do. It's like Ultimate Warrior, shake the rope, and then the defense gets a stop, and then it was boom, 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 down the field, end of the first or towards the end of the first quarter, and you tied it at seven, and that's when it was like. All yeah. the air kind of came out of the place, and then it was just a normal football game. But with until the way it, it started, <laughs> well, until it wasn't again. It and and but to your point, it's fourteen fourteen. You have a chance to get in the end zone. You end up you don't. You switch turnovers. You match turnovers. You kick the field goal. You're up seventeen fourteen. Then you give up that kick return. That's like the second kick return. You're right. It's like seeing a unicorn. Yeah, but. For the Patriots, it is we got the lead, and we turn around, and on the very next play, we give it up, a la Minnesota, mm -hmm. right? Minnesota is – I think Minnesota is the same situation where you went up, and then it was the kick return. I have to go back and look because uh, that one kind of stuck in my head a little bit. But, Christian, you know this better than anybody. That's the whole momentum game, and you always hear all the time, boy, in New England it used to be when they got the lead, they kept the lead. And this one, even though they only went up three, you give it back right away on a play like that. You wake the crowd back up, and then it felt like they were running at least a little bit in quicksand. Well, there's, you know, the more we talk about it, the more I just think of just different aspects of this game, and then it leads me to different aspects of the entire season. So as far as this game, as far as this game go, you were plagued by the same things that played you the very first week. You mentioned that first series. The first passing play was a basic stunt by the left side 
that Cole Strange and Trent Brown could not handle. Nothing, nothing like exotic, nothing crazy, just a defensive end, defensive tackle twist. That was it. Real simple. Mm-hmm. They can't pass it off. They can't handle it. They cannot handle basic football moves. Where's your offensive line coach? He's oh. calling plays. Right. Okay. So when I sit there and go, holy crap. And I remember, and if you go back to the very first game when Mac Jones was strip sacked, they couldn't figure out the blitz pickup they let a man go they just it, it, it was uh they could have picked it up but they didn't know how to they, they they couldn't anticipate it and mac you know couldn't throw hot off of it so the so, so i looked at that i'm like nothing has changed simple basic stuff two guys playing together the entire season the entire season can't pick up a basic second play from scrimmage stunt mm. nothing five strong oh my god guys are bailing out just an end twisted, and then the defensive tackle came around. And it wasn't like the back was involved in whiffed or anything like that. You guys got to handle it. It's basic ENT stuff. So, yeah, ex- exactly. You actually explained it better than I did. ET stunt, right? That's it. Real simple stuff. Like the thing, things you do on the very first day. All right, all right, you're bored with the basic stuff. Okay, let's give you the next level. Hey, okay, you go first and you go around them. Ooh, let me chase it. No, no, don't chase it. No, stay square. Well, what? I shouldn't turn my shoulders? No, you idiot. Right. Like, what are you doing? I understand. I can, In a way, I can sit there and look at Cole Strange and go, eh, you know what? He's get, they're, they're catching him left and right. They're always tricking him. He can never figure it out. But Trent Brown, you're there to help him out. Like, that's your buddy. Like, he's the, he's the baby. You're the adult. Like, help him out. Look, eyes over here. It just it drove me nuts. So, and th- which brings me to... All this stuff is so avoidable. It's all fixable. Every last aspect of this entire season was fixable. Didn't need to happen. Stupid teams, immature teams, poorly coached teams, teams that don't give a crap. This is how they – This they just, they're error repeaters. This, they do the same damn thing over and over and over again. Even if you coach them up, even if you tell them what to do, even if you give them multiple examples – even if you show them what will happen if they don't do it right, even if you threaten to fire them, like this, none of this, none of nothing worked. Nothing worked. So you saw the same issues over and over and over again every single week, unless you played some crappy quarterback that gave you extra opportunities to bail you out of your own stupid situation. Which, by the way, Josh Allen gave you one. He gave he you one in the red zone, and then you had the the opportunity to go up seven. And it's the whole you couldn't take advantage of it. It ends up with three and yada, yada, and there we go. By the way, I did look up that Minnesota. They went up 23-16. They gave up the kick return to tie the game right away. Those are the kinds of plays. And look, I'm of those, and I even tweeted this out. Special teams attrition happens when there are injuries on your roster. So think about it. Would Marcus Jones have been playing 52 snaps on defense if everybody was right? Would Miles Bryant have, I don't know what his snap count ended up at yesterday, but I'm sure it was pretty high. Now, I know they mixed him in a little bit more, but to me, Miles Bryant should be playing 25% of the defensive snaps and the overwhelming majority of the special team snaps. Every single team. But when that guy's got to play up and you lose someone like Schooler, you had a bunch of numbers and names out there that were running around and you were like, who the hell are these people? Or the guys that you knew, their tongues were dragging on the ground because they also are playing snaps on defense and things like that. So there is, you know, that's a part of the roster issue of the everybody makes a big deal that, well, Bill loves to fill out 40 through 53. Yeah, because he doesn't want Miles Bryant playing 55 snaps on defense when there's injury and having to call up, you know, Yev Kassem or whatever to come in and help you on the kick coverage team because you don't have enough guys because you got to play them on defense. Okay, there's a little bit of that in there as well. Excellent point. Excellent point, and I agree with you because when you look at the when you look at the first kickoff return, it looked like none of them knew what they were doing. They all kind of funneled into the middle. That's exactly they right. They all funneled into the middle, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to pop this outside. And then the second one, he comes up the middle, and then uh, Miles Bryant misses the tackle. Right. Can't make an old field tackle. Maybe he's fatigued. Who knows? But I would sit there and say, okay, good point, good point, good point. Okay, I know my team can't cover. The but league, the league, the league already helped me out. They said, you know what, uh, we don't even want kickoff returns. We feel like it's uh, it, there's too many injuries. We're going to move the damn thing up. We're going to make it so every single person can kick the stupid ball out of the back of the end zone so we don't have any issues and we don't have the players' union yelling and screaming about concussions. Okay. 
The way to protect against that is to have a kicker that can kick the damn ball out of the back of the end zone. Oh. And they don't have that either because a... of some stupid, weird suspension that I'm that we'll get into later. So it's a it's just a shrapnel combination of issues that that are easily preventable. That's what I that's the theme for me today. Mm-hmm. Everything is preventable. Like all these situations, this season, this embarrassing season, it was all preventable from the very beginning. Call it pride, call it arrogance, call it mismanagement of personnel. Well, I don't know. Well, Bill Belichick earlier today when pressed on Matt Patricia ended up saying, hey, we looked around and we did what we thought was best for the football team. And then that was it. And it was just like an open-ended statement and he kind of just left it hanging out there. And when you look at it, you could argue, and and I thought at the beginning of the year the biggest whiff Bill Belichick made even more than having Matt Patricia calling plays, was Matt Patricia as the offensive line coach. And there is no question, it's not even close, because those same guys were there last year too. They went backwards up front, and a part of it was because that guy was coaching that position group. And as much as Matt Patricia wasn't a great play caller, doesn't get rhythm, I think somebody who was it, Dan Roloski might have been the one to say, they're just running plays, right? Yeah. There's nothing sequential about it. The bigger thing was that you didn't have an O-line coach who could find a way to connect with those guys and sure up, like you mentioned, little things, stunts, backs helping in protection, things of that nature. They were never able to get that cleaned up. And I'm convinced that the guys in the middle, and hell, I'm even starting to think that Trent Brown's going to be here next year and that it will be some new right tackle and maybe they bring somebody in to sort of challenge the tackles or maybe challenge Trent Brown. But I would dare say that four of those five guys are likely to be back next year. And I think with a real offensive line coach, you might be able to clean those cats up. Because I don't think those guys stink. Mike Onwenu is supposedly one of the highest graded guys. For a rookie, Cole Strange was, Cole Strange might end up in the top five of rookies in terms of snaps this year. Oh, I don't know how many he missed. Maybe a couple times when the he was Jets struggling. Were, well, it was again. They, they pulled him because he was really getting his ass yeah, kicked. Yeah, Quinn and Williams when, a pro with Isaiah bowler. Wynn. Well, yeah, right. right. All that stuff, yep. and then Isaiah Wynn gets hurt. So you know, when you look at like you said, a lot of this is preventable. It was the preventative maintenance that Bill Belichick didn't do. And, and with all due respect to Billy Yates, I don't know if the guy can coach. It's not his job to fix it. It was Matt Patricia's job to fix it, and he was the play caller. But again, there's so much to unpack here. 617-779-7937. Yet, through it all, if a couple of things went their way, this team would be in the postseason with nine wins. As bad as it was, as bad as Matt Patricia was, it was there for them. And defensively, they had a team that was as competitive as any of the AFC defenses in the playoffs. In fact, had they made the playoffs, you might have been able to argue that the Patriots might have had the best defense of all the teams had they made it. But then again, this is all moot.